Hey, what's going on everybody? So here's the IDR tracker and I just wanted to walk through how I would look at this um, for any of my clients as a student loan lawyer. Um, so right away you'll see the screen after you log in to studentaid.gov. It's going to be under your dashboard. If you don't see this screen, they may still be loading it up. I saw that there were still some problems uh, with some people's accounts where there wasn't any data listed. So it'll work itself out, but just be aware of that. Um, that you should see it under your dashboard. So when you get in here on the right hand panel, if you don't have public service loan forgiveness, like you won't see that, but if you do have public service loan forgiveness, there'll be a tracker here. But on this screen, um, in the right side panel, you'll see IDR end of payment term. And this is to give you uh, kind of a big picture of where you're at. And so for this particular person, income driven repayment plan, end of payment term, 15 loans and IDR. Now. It says 15 loans and it says 58 remaining payments. All anyone ever cares about is the 58 remaining payments, right? Tell me what the finish line is, my proximity toward forgiveness. But the thing to keep in mind about this 15 loans is that number may not actually be what you have outstanding. What And what I mean by that is the loans that have a balance with them. The system is like, way they designed it, it's counting loans that, even don't, that don't even have a balance with them, so they have a zero dollar balance. So something to keep in mind. All right, so what I'm going to do here, um, and another thing to keep in mind too, income driven repayment describes a category. And so for a lot of times I talk to people, um, when I explain payment plans based on their income, I say, hey, look, if I were to ask you uh, for a citrus, you would say, well, what type of citrus do you want? That's the same way as asking, okay, you're an income driven repayment, cool, which repayment plan are you in? Are you in a lime? Are you in a lemon? Are you in a grapefruit? Are you in save? IBR, ICR, page worm. Now right away, it doesn't tell you what plan you're in here, but that's just something to keep in mind. All right, let's go ahead and click the button, view IDR progress. All right, so on this screen, what you'll see is income driven repayment, IDR, and the payment term. And then it has a repayment plan here. So it has a, a, a plan inside of that category of income driven repayment. This one happens, this person happens to be on the save plan and they have a direct consolidation loan, they owe about $170, $185,000. They have 242 out of 300 qualifying payments. Now, some of you are gonna have payment accounts that look way off, and you're gonna freak out and be like, oh my God, this is the worst decision ever, I shouldn't have done this. That's okay, it's not okay, but it probably, it, it's fixable. And I was about to say probably, but no, it is fixable. It's just a question of what does that fix look like? How long is it gonna to take to get it fixed? Why is it broken? Sometimes the data is wrong. Sometimes um, your files are so old that there's um, miscoding in your file, so it doesn't properly trace back. But you can dig into it and figure it out. And that's what I want to do here is show you what that is. So you have two tabs at the top, loan details, payment history. And then on the rest of the screen, you'll have different repayment plan options. We don't care really anything about this data. I don't think it's really relevant. I haven't seen a use case yet that shows relevancy for me. So if I was looking at this, all I really want to see are these two things here, loan details, payment history. Now remember I said earlier, the person showed 15 loans with a balance, but as you see, they just have a direct consolidation loan. There are no other loans with a balance. So the system was counting all these other loans as part of that 15, but really they just have two loans with a balance outstanding. All right, and it, by two loans, I actually mean one loan and that's another thing to keep in mind too. You see how this says direct consolidated subsidized, direct consolidated unsubsidized. Dollars to donuts, this is always one loan. And what I mean by that, there's a subsidized portion of the loan and an unsubsidized portion of the loan. All that means is that the government covers some of the interest on the subsidized loan and they don't cover any of the interest of the unsubsidized loan, which is why you'll always see unsubsidized with a much larger balance, almost always. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and click on this next tab, payment history. All right, so when you click on payment history, this is what you're going to see. Um, this person here, it shows their payment uh, loan type, payment period, amount due, monthly payment status, details. And then we have a filter here. And then you'll see it's uh, loan type 1, 2, so you'll see double entry for 1224. When I have a consolidation loan like this, the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and just look at one of the loans. And because almost always the history is going to be exactly the same because it's the same loan. So I'm just going to look at one of these just so I can kind of clear up the data. 
All right, so now I have one of the loans listed. Now I just have data entries here, and you can see they have ineligible loans. Well, this makes sense, um, ineligible payment status. This makes sense for this person because they're in a save plan, and save plan hasn't counted toward forgiveness since August of 2024. So this makes sense. This is totally to be expected. Then towards the bottom, you'll have uh, different tabs so they can click over because they're only showing 12 months at a time. Well, nine, 10 months at a time, sorry. So then you have to go through painstakingly and kind of click through. Now, if you want to figure out which anyone does, is like, okay, tell me what's wrong, what's missing. Then we'll come over here and look at not qualifying. And then we'll apply changes. And then right away, you can see this person only has one, two, three, four, five, five payments that are ineligible. Let's click on view details to see what's going on. And it'll tell you here, save plan ineligible due to forbearance. Now, remember, the one-time account adjustment gave borrowers credit toward forbearance, deferment, and different periods of repayment. The reason why this forbearance isn't counting is because it's under the save plan and is part of the save plan litigation. So this is all totally to be expected. So I would say suggest just go through and make a note of your file and just see where the count is at. If there's anything missing, cool. You'll be able to see it. Just go one by one and see what's going on. Unfortunately, you know, um, you don't have anything other than qualifying, not qualifying. Now, for those of you with like, man, my payment count looks way short, you may want to do um, something from like 2016 backwards or just click through every one. And the reason why I say 2016 is I see a lot of kind of like data issues from 2016 to 1996 in that window. Now that's a big window, 20 years. Why is that? That's because loans were changing hands left and right from servicer to servicer to servicer. And every time they change hands, they either send over like a spreadsheet, basically a big spreadsheet with all the account files, or they're sending over like a JSON file. Yeah, so they send over a JSON file, uh, which is like computer programming that Basically, all I'm trying to say is there's going to be data loss because files were changing hands. That's all. That's all to be expected. All right, let me go ahead and close this out. All right. Now, what we want to do is click back on loan details. Now, on loan details, the next thing we can click on here is compare IDR plans. And then we can just pop up here. Now, this pop up is interesting because um, you'll see right away, like, this person's missing data here. Um, this field isn't doesn't have any information there for IBR. I don't know why that is. It's an error. This person's eligible for IBR. If you're eligible for save, you're eligible for IBR unless you don't have a partial financial hardship. But the computer wouldn't know that because you haven't given it any income information. So this is just missing data. All right. So they say save plan 242 out of 300. Then it says other plans. Oh, look. It looks like they're done with forgiveness. They got 240 out of 240. The problem is this person doesn't qualify for pay as you earn because in order to qualify for pay as you earn, your first loan had to be taken out after 2007. But that's not the case for this person. They got loans going back to 2000. Now, income contingent repayment, you see that it's on uh, 300, so 25 years. That makes sense because they, if they switch to that plan, they have 300. The same thing with IBR. Now, some of you are going to be like, well, don't I have undergrad loans and they should be forgiven and then I'll still have to graduate? No, it doesn't work like that. As soon as you borrow a single dollar for grad school, all of your debt, undergrad and grad, automatically moves to a 25-year timeline. And if you have Parent PLUS loans, you're automatically on a 25-year timeline. So that's what's happening there. Now, you can see here they'll have the loans listed there, but it's not telling you anything other than, cool, these are what the repayment credit is, but again, they're not eligible for pay as you earn. So what do you do with this information? Honestly, you don't need to do much with this information because for many of you that are on save, you're going to be choosing between IBR and ICR. There are going to be a handful of you that can choose pay as you earn. And the question is, should you move to pay as you earn um, or ICR if you can qualify for IBR? And that's a tricky question because Right now, the save plan litigation, there's also a question of whether or not any forgiveness under payer ICR is actually legal. We don't know the answer to that yet, so if you wanted the safe approach, you may just choose IBR. And then you can go ahead and apply for that through studentaid.gov, or you could do a paper application. But look, that is effectively what we're doing here with this tracker. 
there is no other information to worry about here. I know a lot of you all have concerns about the accuracy of things. Um, if I were you, just take screenshots of printouts of what it is that's on your screen because there's actually a warning that came down from, let me show you, uh, from Student Loan Bar Protection Center or the Debt Collective. Hold on. Yeah, here it goes. So the Debt Collective, they're advising people go through and just take screenshots of your payment history and loan details. And it's one of those better to be safe than sorry approaches because there is a scenario where this information is removed from studentaid.gov. So in order to protect yourself, you would want to go ahead and just have that documented information there um, so you can refer back to it and say, hey, here's what I was awarded, here are the issues here. Now, if you do have issues with your payment count where you're missing data, you're gonna wanna work with the FSA Ombudsman. Now, as I tell like the people who consult with me, the problem with that is the Ombudsman you work with is typically what we call a BPO, where you're not getting like direct contact to the ombudsman himself, but you're getting like a third party service agency who's running interference to try to filter through the noise, which makes sense at one part because you're talking about 43 million borrowers, but when it comes to really getting an accurate, contextually rich response back from the education department ombudsman's office, a lot of times that's lacking which is why clients end up, people end up coming to me or others like me, and then we have a different unit that we work with to try to get things done. And it takes longer, it's slow, but there is a way to get it fixed, I just wanna say that. So, let's head back on over here. Uh, hopefully this makes perfect sense to you all. If you have any questions, um, we're around in our newsletter, feel free to uh, pop in there and we just update as things happen. Have an awesome day.